hello everybody uh, this is rudra pradhan here welcome to engineering econometrics today we will continue with you know panel data models and in the last lecture we have already highlighted the fixed effect model the random effect model the estimation procedures of both random effect model and fixed effect model and get to know the difference between fixed effect model and random effect model. And we also discuss what are the ways you can actually uh, make a choice to, to use random effect models or fixed effect model. Sometimes we may use actually both the models simultaneously, but ultimately in this lecture we like to check how the estimation process and how the panel data models can be used to bring some kind of you know difference corresponding to time series more you know modeling and the kind of you know cross sectional modeling. So, in order to justify the importance of the panel data you know models for any kind of you know engineering you know uh, problems. So, let us take an you know take an example and uh, here the example is like this. So, let uh, it is a industry problems and uh, uh, generally uh, uh, the industrial problem is like that it most of the instances it is the game between input and output relationship and uh, every times we are uh, we are actually dealing with you know uh, productions and that's mostly operational problems and here we are keen to know the cost aspects so that means you know how out output can be optimized with respect to minimum cost. So, that means every times we, we should have a more and more output with you know less and less cost that is what the kind of you know requirement. So, now uh, what is happening uh, since we are using actually both cross sectional units and time series units in, you know that to in a panel data setup. So, if you look into the real life problems you will find you, you, you know when there are you know many farms and you know that is what the cross sectional type of you know situation and then how these farms are behaving you know uniformly or differently uh, you know uh, with respect to different time frame. Uh, by default uh, the uh, immediate problems which you can actually highlight is that you know for you know I mean uh, technically it may be two different ways. The first one is uh, a, you know for a particular time periods how the cross sectional units are you know uh, uh, you know they behave are they performing uniformly or they are you know uh, 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 you know and they behave differently and for a particular time periods so I, we like to check whether they their behavior is the same or you know different again uh, with a particular time you know cross sectional units we like to check whether the particular you know cross sectional units as say industry or a particular form is maintaining kind of you know, stability or you know sustainability that means they maintain a similar kind of you know status uh, so either they maintain a similar kind of you know status or they may have a different kind of you know status that means there is ups and downs so far as the production is concerned cost is concerned like that. So, that means these are the types of you know problems uh, if you understand uh, the situation is like this then you know the uh, the immediate choice is to use panel data model because here we have a plenty of you know cross sectional elements and plenty of you know time series element and keeping time com com component constant if, if we allow cross sectional you know variations then there is a kind of you know implications. Again, uh, keeping you know cross sectional unit constant and allow time uh, element will vary again there is a, a different implications. So, now we like to bring that uh, because we have already discussed uh, all these you know concept in the form of you know fixed effect models and random effect model. So, now we like to bring into the reality how is that and how they can differentiate and what are the best outcomes which you can actually bring here to analyze this situation. And to uh, to analyze this particular structures, let's start with you know uh, cost and output. Uh, for you know uh, for for this particular you know uh, you know structures, what we can like to do, uh, we will will have a, a problems. Uh, so the problem is a problem is like this. We have 
uh, we have actually a cost function of an industry uh, it was observed that you know cost and output outputs from four different companies over 10 different uh, you know time uh, you know time periods but technically so here if it is four different companies means i equal to 4 and 10 different time periods mean t equal to 10 so that means uh, if you go by actually uh, you know uh, analyzing or to understand the situation the situation will be it is game between c and q so simple the function will be c equal to alpha plus beta q okay so alpha is the intercept beta is the slope uh, coefficient that to represent the output with respect to cost. So, now the game is actually with respect to i and t that is the sample framework through which you can understand the reality and uh, uh, we can use this particular structure for the estimation. Now, uh, you know if you start with let us say i equal to 1, 2, 3 and 4 then time will be very 10, 10, 10, 10. So, that means we have a 10 different outputs all together so like this. Okay. And again, if you will apply t equal to 1, 1, 2 up to 10, then every case we have a 4 different sample points. Of course, the sample size is very low, but still uh, with 2 uh, you know variables, we can uh, we can actually estimate the kind of you know process. Of course, for you know having more and more i and more and more t, the problem will be more and more interesting. So, that means technically if you allow t will start with the 1, 2, up to 10 separately then that means technically we have a 10 different outputs okay and uh, every output will represent the uh, uh, functional relationship between cost and an output so that means technically we like to know in that case you know if you allow you know t constant then you know i will be very so that means the clear cut indication is that you know for a particular you know time period how these firms are actually a, you know bringing the cost and output relationship. So, again if you go to uh, you know other sides where I will be, you know remain fixed that means when I equal to 1 then we have a one output then when I equal to 2 we have another output. So, in that case so we like to check actually a uh, how you know time variations will bring the cost and output difference. So, this is how the theoretical understanding about this problem. So, now what we like to do? So, to differentiate this particular structures, so let us start with a simple model like this. So, this model is actually this model is like this C i t equal to you know beta q i t. So, that is how the pool data use and uh, to represent the panel then you have to bring the panel features. So, now what is happening here? So, we start with the first you know connecting to connecting to cross sectional units. So, that means since we have i equal to 4. So, that means we are using three different domains. Okay. So, this is for uh, company 2, this is for company 3, this is for company 4. Now, we have i equal to 4. So, that means when uh, when we put in you know, uh, i equal to 2, so that times this will be active and the, these two will be inactive. So, when i equal to 3, then this will be active and these two will be inactive. When i equal to 4, this will be active and this these two will be inactive. So, now when all these three will be inactive then by default the particular impact will go to the i equal to 1 that is the form 1. So, now obviously, so we like to check you know uh, 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 how cost will be differentiate uh, you know uh, you know among these four farms so far as you know output is concerned. So, now theoretically what we can do? So, uh, theoretically the observation is that we L, we ask the typical you know for farms that you know they will go for you know uniform productions let us say q equal to 1000 numbers or something like that and then we like to check what is the cost difference. Uh, then finally, after checking the cost difference with you know same level of production then there are two possibilities either the cost uh, you know cost for this you know 1000 output will be remain same or cost will be different for you know different farms. If they are same then you know a econometrics will not you know give better kind of an explanation, but if they are different then this particular model or this uh, this particular you know structure can give better kind of you know interpretation. Uh, in order to know what is exactly happening and what is the reality, so let us see the model outcome. 
So, now uh, having the structure, so we can go to the model outcome. So, now the model outcome will be like this, see here. So, oh, means this is this is actually with the help of you know data, you have to just estimate, estimate the model. Then ultimately after the estimation, so we will have here alpha alpha component, then uh, uh, dummy, first dummy, second dummy and third dummy. So, these are all these three are in actually dummy. Uh, so, it, it, it will behave either you know 1 and 0. So, it will be 1 then uh, others will be by default 0, this is 1 then others will be 0 like this. So, ultimately, so the impact will be actually restricted with respect to 1 and 0. So, ultimately the final impact will be multiplied by the coefficient with respect to 1 or with respect to 0. So, when we, we like to allow this active then this will be 1 then by default others will be 0. So, this is what the kind of you know, structure. So, now what will it do here? So, we will we'll check the outcome. So, now this is what the estimated outcome and in this estimated outcomes, so we have actually a alpha coefficients, then the first dummy coefficient, second dummy coefficient, third dummy coefficient and by default W 2 will be moving for actually 1 0, then this will be moving with 1 0, this will be also moving with 1 0. So, that means W 3 and W 4 ultimately. So, now what is happening here? So, we have actually i equal to 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, but we have taken actually 3 dummies. So, that to for company 2, company 3 and company 4. So, now what is happening? We like to check uh, a particular level of output. Let us say q equal to 1000, right? So, now we like to check what is the cost coefficient, cost components for uh, you know 10,000 for company 1 that will be represented by C 1, then cost coefficient uh, for the company 2 represented by C 2, then C 3 and then C 4, right. So, now what is happening since this is the com copy dummy coefficients for you know company 2, this is dummy coefficient for company 3 and this is dummy coefficient for company 4, then by default we assume that this is equal to 0 all, then by, def uh, by default the coefficient at the particular you know impact will be restricted to 2.32 plus 16.17 as uh, plus 1.112 uh, q. So, that is how the impact. So, that means uh, if all are in actually 0 then for C 1 the cost coefficient will be C i t equal to 2.32 plus uh, 1.12 q, uh, q i t. So, that is what the actually cost functions. Okay. So, now for company 2, so then this will be a, a this will be a, a you know a net addition uh, with respect to net addition of you know 10.11. So, that means technically, so it will be it will be here C i t equal to so C C 1 plus 10 plus 11. So, similarly in the case of you know C 3, it will be C 1 plus 2.39 and then uh, for C 4 it will be C 1 uh, plus 16.17. So, that is what the difference. So, that means this is the base model which represent the cost structure of the first company and uh, that to a uniform output and again for company 2 the cost structure will be C 1 plus 10.11 uh, uh, and then for company 3 C 1 plus 2.39 and C 4 C 1 plus uh, you know 16.17. So, that is the cost difference. Now, to simplify this one, so for company 1 put q equal to 1000, then if you put q equal to 1000 here and you simplify, then the total cost will be uh, uh, will be this much that that to let us say uh, 1121.32 uh, and that is the cost uh, uh, you know uh, uh, having uh, for company 1 to produce 1000 output. So, now for coming to company 2 to produce the same level of output 1000, the cost co cost co component will be C 1 plus 10.11 that is what we have already obtained. So, now so 1121.32 plus 10.11 that is the cost component for company 2 to produce the same level of output 1000 and again for company 3 
uh, the net addition will be 2.385 and for company for the net addition will be 16.17. So, now uh, uh, so far as the efficiency is concerned uh, since we are uh, allowing the companies to produce the same level of output. So, now a, for a particular company or a particular firm can be declared as efficient where the cost factor will be substantially low. So, that means technically in this case company 1 is declared as you know most efficient compared to company 2, company 3 and company 4 and that is how the beauty of this kind of you know panel data model. So, that means you know uh, uh, you know using the panel data you bring the kind of you know estimated output. Now, through these estimated output and uh, uh, bringing the kind of you know uh, panel component that to uh, uh, cross sectional dummies and the time dummies you can actually analyze differently and then uh, bring the problem in a more attractive way to uh, highlight the some of the critical issues of the uh, you know uh, engineering problems. So, likewise we can have actually different kind of you know structure to you know analyze through panel data model and uh, uh, we can consider uh, you know uh, uh, means we can you know discuss the same kind of you know structure through second examples that to relationship between R and D expenditure and number of you know patents. So, there are several companies that spend you know uh, um, you know more revenue towards you know R and D ex, uh, R and D activities and uh, uh, then you know they are expecting you know more and more innovations. So, obviously, we are expecting the R and D activities and you know innovations are positively related. Then again uh, it is a kind of you know, similar problems we can have a situation like that you know uh, ask you know companies to put you know similar kind of you know expenditure and check what is the you know uh, uh, outcomes that is the innovations and we like to check whether you know a particular firm is more innovative uh, compared to the other firms uh, so far as you know uh, uniform expenditure is concerned like the ex uh, like the previous case where you know we are checking the cost difference with respect to same level of output here we, we like to analyze uh, uh, having same level of you know r and d expenditure uh, what is the level of you know innovation with different you know companies so that means these are the classic examples where you know panel data can be used to you know analyze the problems and come with you know excellent kind of you know implication through which you can generalize the structure and can get more inference uh, and uh, which is not exactly possible in the case of you know either cross sectional units and you know time series. Even it can be possible through cross sectional unit and time series unit the the kind of you know uh, findings and the kind of you know outlook is completely different if you analyze the same problem through panel data modeling because we are actually pulling the data and getting the reality that means we are bringing in a kind of in a competitive situation then you are comparing otherwise you know you are just individually comparing without any kind of you know uh, uh, kind of you know competitiveness or the kind of you know competition. So, uh, panel data by default will bring such kind of an environment which can uh, bring the beauty as per the requirement of some of the engineering problems. So, now corresponding to this you know uh, problems, so we have actually a model. So, because patent is the kind of you know components here R and D if you fix this one is the constant uh, then how uh, how they behave each other and you know differentiate each other the same way. So, here the estimated model is like this. So, now you can fix a particular component and then you can examine the, the situation and then the model outcome is like this and uh, so that means technically the estimated model indicates that you know there is a positive relationship between budget you know R and D budget and number of uh, uh, you know patents that is what you know our main target and uh, the secondary target is to know whether there is a kind of you know uh, difference which firm can be declared as you know more efficient uh, here the interpretation will be with same level of R and D expenditure who is bringing more you know innovation to the system that that can be declared as you know more efficient compared to the previous one where giving same level of output to which firm is having you know less cost. So, you know if these are you know uh, these are the problems then by default you can use panel data model and then you can analyze in a more attractive way as per the particular you know engineering requirement. 
So, on an average for every 1 percent increase in R and D number of patents will increase by 0 0.3 you know that means 84 uh, uh, the, uh, this, uh, this is what the uh, kind of in a structure. So, now what is happening actually uh, uh, we have actually the kind of in a model output which is a uh, which is actually satisfying as per the particular you know uh, you know uh, requirement. But uh, uh, on the top of that, uh, we are actually bringing different kind of you know, inference which can, which can you know produce much better results and much better inference compared to you know simply cross-sectional modeling and the time series modeling. So ultimately, uh, so now in the second object, uh, you know uh, models, again you can bring actually dummy impact, and then we try to check which farm is more efficient. Uh, compared to uh, previous one. Uh, so, likewise you know you can uh, use both you know uh, fixed effect models and random effect models and then bring the situations uh, where we can actually in a position to analyze which firm is more efficient. Uh, so, far as you know R and expenditure is concerned and the uh, 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 output innovation is concerned. Okay. So, ultimately uh, the, if the same model can be used through random effect model, then by default the intercept term will not be there, but ultimately the model outcome will be adjusted through the error component. Of course, the effectiveness uh, of the model will be depends upon the significance of the parameter and the R square value, which is actually coming here very high. And uh, now, uh, what will we uh, what will we do here? From four different approaches. Uh, that we have tried here is gives different results and different kind of you know, interpretation. Since this data we use is actually panel data, we should use either you know fixed effect model or you know random effect model. Now, uh, what is happening here? The choice can be guided by the objective of this analysis. If we really want to know the impact of you know uh, other than R and A spending to the number of you know innovation that to patents. So, fixed effect model can be used. Moreover, the Hossman test can be used to investigate whether the residuals are not correlated with the regressors and uh, means uh, as long as you know you like to check you know the use of fixed effect model and random effect model. These are all called as you know te oh, means uh, two things one is the technical requirements, uh, the other one is actually the problem requirements. If the problem requirement is uh, you know kind of you know comparative analysis, then uh, it is better to bring the fixed effect model. If the problem requirement is not uh, the comparative analysis, if it is only to check whether there is a strong association between you know dependent variable and independent variable, then the end of effect models may be a better choice. So, that is how the uh, big deal between fixed effect model and random effect model. So, likewise we have actually a different kind of you know approaches. So, uh, I can bring another examples, uh, uh, you know, we are actually we have four, uh, you know, five different companies and uh, uh, where 10 different time periods like the uh, first examples. Again, so we like to check the cost difference, uh, you know, so far as you know output and you know cost is concerned and same way you can bring actually uh, three dummies and when these three dummies uh, will be actually 0, then the impact will go to the first company and uh, uh, the second company uh, means that first company by default will be the best model and the impact of second company where you know first dummy will be coming to the picture and second company the second dummy will come into the picture I means third company will be uh, with respect to second dummy and then finally, fourth company with respect to you know th third dummy because we use ultimately three dummies that to the representative of you know company 2, company 3 and company 4. So, when company 2, company 3, company 4 will be inactive, then the impact will go to the intercept and the kind of you know uh, uh, independent variable coefficients only. So, ultimately that is the best model. So, now the first term if you introduce, then that will be the impact of the sec second company and then second term will be impact of the third company and uh, uh, you know third variable third dummy impact will go to the company for. So, likewise we have a different kind of you know, examples and this is how the kind of you know, structure and uh, ultimately uh, like the previous case we can fix actually uh, output constant and then check the difference which company is more effective 
uh, compared to you know same level of output ok. So, that means technically we have discussed you know various kind of you know examples uh, through which you can justify that you know panel ultra model uh, or panel ultra molding is actually good choice compared to cross sectional molding and time series molding because it will bring much better inference and uh, some the outlook is actually be much you know uh, broader uh, compared to the you know simple cross sectional molding and you know time series molding. So, uh, ultimately uh, till now we have discussed the pool data models and in the panel data model that two fixed effect concept random effect concept and then we have another concept called as you know GMM concept. So, GMM basically generalized method of movements and now the question is why GMM if we have a pool data then we have actually a fixed effect model and we have a random effect model. But GMM is a different kind of you know approach which is actually more advanced compared to pool data, fixed effect and random effect. And we have actually three important uh, you know uh, structure through which you can justify that the requirement of you know GMM and that will be high class model and it is you know uh, much kind of you know uh, efficiencies compared to you know. Uh, means more, uh, better uh, uh, you know uh, models or you know better efficient model compared to fixed effect model and random effect because some kind of you know endogeneity issue which you can address through GMM. And here if you could if you ask why GMM then uh, straight answer is uh, with respect to three uh, scenarios. So, first is the non linear estimation then uh, second one is the structural estimations then the robust uh, robustness you know estimation and the models of estimated using GMMs uh, uh, can be of you know uh, rational expectations models or can be non Gaussian distributed models right. Uh, so, basically it starts with you know uh, simple moment conditions population versus samples and uh, this is what actually mean of the error terms and covariance of the error terms and the independent variables and by default sample uh, uh, mean we, which you can derive by taking the uh, you know total sample size. So, we are expecting that you know mean of the sample will also equal to 0 and also the covariance between these two also equal to 0. So, that is actually the requirement of you know regression modeling. So, ultimately if you go by you know GMM so, well as as a you know methods of mo moment estimator. So, a simple y equal to x beta plus error term. So, that you know the we can obtain the error component. Then mo moment condition will follow like this and the MMM estimator will be beta hat equal to x transpose x inverse by x transpose y. That is the same structure, but the you know the kind of an adjustment will be slightly different. So, now if you generalize the kind of you know method. So, we generally follow the uh, condition where the number of instrument is equal to number of coefficients and that we like to actually uh, process it, but what is happening in some cases number of instruments is greater than to number of coefficient which is actually against the simultaneous equation system. So, essentially the number of equations you know is greater than to number of coefficient. Uh, then the model will be declared as actually over identify models, but uh, when number of you know equation equal to number of coefficient that is called as you know exactly identify and the simultaneous simul equation structure is very effective and in that case we may not have any problem, but uh, when there is a question of an over identify model then the GMM structure is very you know practical is very useful. So, what is happening in the over identified case? So, the solution is to minimize the condition so that the coefficients are able to approximate the moment condition and that is a peak coefficient such that the orthogonality condition can be satisfied that is why uh, what is the kind of you know, requirement and uh, models may be nonlinear, but uh, some uh, Elwer equations upon uh, you know imply models in labels not logs of the variables so, that means some kind of you know, adjustment you have to do or uh, you know when the situation is actually over identified and I am not bringing actually too much mathematics here because the particular method is too much critical and very complex compared to fixed effect models and a, a random effect model. 
but uh, uh, it is actually means the bigger advantage of this model is you know bringing the dynamics to the system and again addressing the kind of you know endogeneity component. So, now uh, the uh, you know there the uh, so far the implementation is concerned it is actually two step procedure in the first steps any uh, any uh, symmetry positive definite matrix uh, uh, which yield consistent estimates of the parameters and second using this parameter construct the weighting matrix you know and then from that we can undertake the minimization problem. So, that is the technical you know means technical procedure you have to follow how to get the estimated outputs from the uh, GMM. Ultimately you know uh, our you know uh, problem kind of you know understanding and the kind of you know problem discussion ultimately depends upon the model outcome whether the outcomes are coming through fixed effect models or random effect models or GMM. Uh, of course, uh, we have to use the models and the structure the model as per the specific objectives and the kind of requirements. Uh, if there is no specific objective and the kind of requirements, ultimately the game will be ending with you know the impact of you know independent variable to dependent variable. But in between there are couple of side objectives which can actually explore and that too you know with the help of uh, all the geno panel data modeling starting with you know fixed effect models, random effect models and the kind of you know GMM. So, uh, of course, it is actually kind of you know uh, complex models, but it has actually lots of you know advantage uh, to solve actually uh, some of the you know uh, engineering problems and uh, the advantage of GMM is actually it does not impose restriction on the distribution of errors, which is actually there in the case of you know fixed effect models and random effect model and it allow oh, you know for heteroscedacity of unknown form and then finally, estimate the parameters even when models cannot be solved analytically. That means, uh, uh, you know through the adjustment the our identify condition can be materialized. So, that is the actually big deal and big advantage of you know GMM. So, to, to this you know uh, you know end, so what we are you know actually is summarizing that you know panel data is a kind of you know structure which can actually bring uh, you know different kind of you know situations and different kind of you know uh, you know kind of you know uh, structure through which you can generalize the problem in a more attractive way and we can actually uh, bring some of the issues or you know inference which is not actually possible through uh, simple cross sectional modeling and time series modeling. That is why the same problems if possible it is better to analyze through panel data modeling and of course, uh, it uh, exclusively depends upon you know what is the kind of you know objectives ultimate objectives. Uh, then you have to make a choice which kind of you know models you finally use and uh, whatever may be the kind of you know choice whether it is a fixed effect model or random effect model or you know GMM ultimately all these models are very reliable and uh, very good for you know uh, you know solving some of the big problems that to when the data structure is having both you know time series type and you know cross sectional type and we are interested to pull the data uh, to analyze the situation as per the particular you know, requirement. With this we will stop here. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.